turns to soap wheels. If you look, you've got surface deposits, you've got sandstones, you've got shields and mudstones, and you've got pole seams, and in soap wheels you've got limestone beneath it. And we know from the mining history in these soap wheels valleys that there are three separate water regimes in the soap wheels field. You've got the water regime associated with the upper pole measures and the Swansea series. And if you remember places like Brighton with the Colliery, they were very wet. The sandstone is porous and the water travels through the sandstone. And when you go to Brock the Road a bit to Morley's Colliery, and you'll see the water from Brighton coming up from Morley Shaft. In the middle and lower pole measures, they are much drier because you've got mudstones, you've got fireplace, and they act as an amplitude. And then beneath that, you've got limestone. And most of you who are um, enjoying a pint in the evening will know that there's a, quite a, a famous brewery in Cardiff. And that brewery abstracts water from the limestone beneath the coal mine. And everybody recognises that it's good quality water. So you've got three separate water regimes. There was a question earlier about the drilling rig. This is the type of drilling rig that would be used. We're, at this point in time, we're still at the feasibility stage. But our current thinking is that we're talking about an onshore rig. We're not talking about options. Eventually, Cliff Natural Resources recognises that the vast majority of coal isn't here in America. The vast majority of UCG coal is in the North Sea. And eventually the ambition is to get into the North Sea. But is this a trial area. then? Is this a trial so you can practice here and then if it works, do it no, in the North it's Sea? Not a trial. It sounds like it's a trial. It sounds like you practice it here. If it goes wrong, it doesn't matter. If it works, you can do it in the North Sea. Can you just clear up that it's not a trial? Can we have answers as well? Right. That drilling rig actually, that photograph I took in 2009 at Mani de which is just south of Almanco. Um, Many of you may have driven past that drilling rig at the time. But certainly that hole was drilled in 2009, and to my knowledge, there were no problems associated with that drilling rig. And I know from the time that I was area surveying South Wales that we drilled dozens of holes in this area. The most recent ones were the, for the Carway Well project, but before that, they were for the Abercrombie project, there was the Margam project. So there were dozens of these deep holes drilled with rigs very similar to the one that you've seen in that photograph. And the one in that photograph was at Money of the Guire, just south of Amalcote. Excuse me, how many were under the sea? How many? Can I just make it absolutely clear, particularly for people who have come in a little bit later, that in order to give as many people as possible an opportunity to ask questions, we're asking people to write their questions down on the white piece of paper. You can hold your hand up at any time with the white piece of paper and one of the others will come and collect it. And when the presentations have been finished on both sides, i.e. the Club Natural Resources presentation and the presentation from Keith Ross, a member of FRACOF, um, then there will be an opportunity to ask questions. I've already got half a dozen questions people have got in mind. We'll start with those half a dozen. I'll read those names out when the presentations are over. So there'll be plenty of time for people to be writing down and putting up their hands with the white piece of paper so that we don't end up in a situation where we're jumping from one topic to another all over the shop. Um, so let's get back to the presentations, then we'll have the questions after. Thank you. Right, this is... Um Crypt technique and what it involves, as I said, is a cotton wheel device on the surface and a tube going down the bowl. In this country, and there is a slide that shows it, all of the bowls in this country have got to comply with the 1995.
drilling regulations. That's out with the planning and everything else. And what you'll find with those is that the borehole starts off with a sandpipe at the top. And that is grouted in. And it has to be done to the standard set by the health and safety executive. And as I said earlier, the tube goes down through the steel lined borehole until you have an ignition source there and gradually that ignition source is retracted back through the pole. Now anybody can go on the website tonight and look and there are a whole range of professional papers done on UCG in this country including, as I said, the, the European trial and the experience that was gained from it. And there are two I'd like to refer to in this context this afternoon. The first one is that I mentioned earlier we had difficulty drilling 40 yards in the 1970s. By the time we got to the 1990s, when Mike was in Spain, we were capable of drilling to 100 metres. In 2006, the DTI produced a report which showed that repeatedly people could drill five to 600 metres in core. Where we are today, 2014, we believe that people can drill 1,000 metres in core. So there is obviously this development and ability to steer a drill within the core. And that it's that ability means that at this point in time, we are not looking at offshore drilling rigs. And UCG in the UK is deemed to be a coal mining operation. And that's why one of the papers there says creating the coal mine of the 21st century. It is more aligned with coal mining operation than anything else. So there's a lacquer estuary. And our conditional license is for the area edge red. That's the area that we are undertaking a feasibility study. It doesn't mean to say that all of that area will be affected. As I said earlier, if the feasibility study is negative, none of it will be affected. But if the feasibility study shows that there is a particular area of interest within there where the sensitivities of the pen valve cockle beds the bird sanctuary and so on can be addressed, then we would take it to the next stage. What that shows you is that UCG is confined to offshore. We are not allowed to do any UCG on under the terms of our license. And very simply to, to answer one potential question, the reason that this is offshore in this particular interest is that there were already pre-existing petroleum licenses on the onshore areas. And again, if you go on the DEC website, you can see those licenses. And DEC and the Coal Authority have arranged between them that they will not grant a UCG license where there is an existing petroleum <coughs> license. So what have we done since we actually had this conditional license. The first thing to do is to look at the old mine workings. Obviously, if somebody is mining the coal, there's nothing there to gasify. And obviously, we want to keep away from disused mine workings. Now, we've got this information on a much bigger scale, but this shows you broadly where the mining is taking place. And as you'd expect, a lot of it is in the top end of the estuary. There's been mining, as we know, under the pen cloud part of the estuary, and there's been mining under the Fenechli and um, Barry Court part of the estuary. That information, as I said, we've got on a much bigger scale, and that is the first step of evaluating where the coal has been mined, how thick the coal was, and also some of the conditions, because with the abandonment plants, people put in where pumping was taking place. So we got a good idea of what was happening. 